Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. How are you? Oh, this morning was a tough one to get up. Um, so last night I went to, um, I actually went to something called Vision Builders, which is basically a leadership conference. And leadership conference was actually held by my church. So I'm not going to get all religious on you at all. But I just want to share something that I think is really fascinating about um, about two years ago, a year and a half ago, maybe, I started reading the Bible. I started read this Bible. I don't know if you guys know, um, I don't know if you know Isabel, um, who runs a company called Beyond Diet. Um, it's a huge company. Uh, she wrote the book Beyond Diet. She's an amazing, good friend of mine. And she was saying to me, I was saying to her, you know, I've done A Course in Miracles. I've meditated. I've, you know, basically grown up reading Wayne Dyer and I was like I just felt the need to not just go to church when I was having a bad day or a bad moment like a relationship broke up or um, I was just feeling a little bit depressed or something like that and I thought you know I, I always go to scripture when things are having a hard time what if what if I actually learned what the darn book said or what the blessing book says? And and here's what's crazy. So about a year and a half, I started reading the Bible because of Isabel, Beyond Diet. Well, not because of her, but the one I'm reading is because of her. And then, you know, slowly I, the first year I read the Bible, I had no idea what it said at all. I was like, I think I knew six scriptures in the entire book. You want to talk about endurance on sticking with something all the way to the end? Because the truth is, is I had absolutely no desire to keep reading this, this book, this Bible. And, and I'll get to the point of why I'm sharing this with you in just a second. But I kept in it, just like in business. Uh, I just stayed in it until I had a breakthrough. And I'm hoping that today, over the next 10 minutes, I can help you have a breakthrough in something. And um, and here's what here's what I think one of the biggest breakthroughs that I could provide for you is think about something that you really want in your life right now. Think about something that it's really important for you to create it, to manifest it, to really you know have it happen in your life right now. And think about the reason why it's not happening and the emotion that goes with that feeling. Right? And if you're in an emotion, I think Tony Robbins said this great, if you're having a shitty day, if you get up in, on the wrong side of the bed, then every decision from that moment sucks. Right? Th this, is why, this is why when I watch people go through a hard time in their business and they start making decisions like leaving, you know, leaving their business or, you know, uh, leaving their community or, you know, even leaving a relationship. You guys, my last relationship before my husband now, he actually, w I found him talking to other women. Do you know that I didn't leave him until I had no energy on it anymore? In fact, I was totally back in love with him when I left him. And why did I leave him? Because he wasn't the man that I wanted to be with. And here's why I'm sharing this with you. I want you to hear this. I want you to get this because I think sometimes people hear, they hear messaging and here's what's amazing. So many people listen to a certain amount of coaching and then what they do is they just disconnect and they disconnect and everything that got them here doesn't get them there, right? And then they find themselves back and slipping into an old pattern of righteousness that has them be stuck. Right? And so here's the truth. I shared a lot about this yesterday about, you know, it doesn't matter how you feel, it's how you're committed. Right? It doesn't matter how you feel, it's how you're committed. And you guys, I would love it if you just tag a friend, tag another entrepreneur that needs to hear this right now that wants to get to the next level, somebody who's ambitious and make a difference for them right now. So that would be awesome if you do that. Okay, so here's why I'm sharing this with you. Um, Last night, I go to this leadership, you know, dinner, and it's basically for people who have been giving. And I started to give and tithe um, a long time ago when I was totally broke. And it's what actually had me start making some great money, I think because of just even the thinking that comes around of letting go of scarcity, right? Like the Bible talks about this woman that this group of people that were tithing to Jesus, and, and it actually says that Jesus looked at their tithes, like he actually looked at their tithes and what they were giving. 
and which is quite bold, right? And the rich were tithing and everybody was tithing and this woman, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm going through this quickly for, for the sense that I get that not everybody is into the Bible, but I think this is a good lesson. And so this woman comes and she ties like basically two cents, right? Like she, but it's like, it's, it's her livelihood. Like it's, it's the money that pays for her rent. It's the money that pays for the food in her, in her belly, you know? And I think sometimes people think that giving is about only giving when it's convenient. And this comes down to helping people. Like this Friday, I'm helping a really great friend of mine. I mean, she has millions of followers on social media. She's a rock star. She's a great friend of mine. And I'm spending a VIP day with her to help her strategize the model to scale to the next level right? Based on her passion and, and her vision. And so one of the things that they were saying at this dinner last night that I thought was amazing, which I love, is actually understanding scripture. I don't care about religion. I love scripture, right? So, so it teaches me so much. Did you know the Bible that was actually written by very wealthy people? And here's what's crazy. People listen to very wealthy people until it, they decide that they don't want to listen to them anymore. And then they think they're going to take it from here. And that's just not how things work. Do you know that I am constantly being coached and I'm constantly um, running my ideas by someone greater than me that's been where I want to be, right? At the same time, I am constantly tithing and giving. Even this whole act of 6 a.m. coffee with Shanda was an act of giving because it felt uncomfortable to give to you and commit to doing this every morning at 6 a.m. Now I love it. Now I love it because what happens is the person who is giving is the person who is living, right? So everything you actually want is connected with you breaking an idea inside your head that you can't do it. And if you actually went out there and gave, whether that's helping other people, whether that's financially, give whatever it is you need more. So if you need more time, start giving your time right? If you need more money, start giving your money. If you need more kindness and love in your life, start giving that more. Go volunteer at a homeless shelter or a woman's battered shelter. You know, get like, there was, do you know that there was a moment that somebody actually asked me for my son's clothes and I didn't give it to them because I thought, what if I have another boy? And then I realized that I had that limiting thought of hoarding. And some people might say that that's not hoarding, but it is. I had a sentimental attachment to the clothes and thought I would love to see my next baby wearing it if I have a boy, instead of the act of that person asking me for something because she needed it and I didn't give, right? I'm all about being totally transparent here. It's not about us being perfect, right? In fact, if you're judging another person, just effing stop. Stop. There's nothing worse than spiritual people sitting there on their high horse being righteous, right? Stop. Stop judging other people and allow people to stand for you. Allow people to sell to you. Allow people to give to you. You know, there's uh, one of the things that I, that I really learned about Jesse Itzler, who wrote the book Living with the, Living with the Seal. When Seal came to work with him, he didn't even exchange money and pay him. Do you know what? Do you know I seal actually went to work with him because Jesse said he would do a hundred percent of what he said he coached him to do, and if he did a hundred percent of what he what he coached him to do, he'd get the results, and that's why Seal said yes. And so, how many people in your life are you fighting? Are you fighting that are trying to help you succeed? How many goals and ambitions do you have in your heart? but you're so hoarding onto things or holding onto attachment that you can't even release that energy because the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. You show me a prosperous person and I will show you somebody who is generous. They are playing their employees well. They're incentivizing, they're bonusing, they're giving. Some of the biggest givers on this planet, Bill Gates, and they're giving. Last night I gave uncomfortably. In fact, you know, Ash and I even kind of started, started to get into it a little bit because it was a huge uncomfort goal. And the goal was based on, on, not goal, but give, 
was based, well, I guess it's a goal. It's a goal of, of what I, you know, I, I, I actually doubled my goal of what I ever wanted to give. And I doubled that. I added, you know, another six figures more than that onto it. And I don't want to share what it was because I don't think that's what's important. Um, and it's not about me. It's about having this act of faith, right? And everything you want, like if, if I, I teach this inside my community, I mean, I'm giving my car away, you know, next month, I'm giving my Porsche away to incentivize people to, you know, make more money in their business. And can you believe that there's actually people saying, I don't really care about that. I mean, you just have to stop and say, really, really, you, you, you actually like, it's that hard to let things in. And so this is not me judging. This is me saying, wake up because the world wants to give to you. People want to give to you. There was a post I made on Instagram not too long ago. And I said, thank God I allowed Ash, my husband to love me because there's many men I didn't allow to love me. And that's because of like limitations, lack and fear. So I want to inspire you today. I want to inspire you. If, if you haven't tied before, go tied. Lisa Sasevich made a difference for me about a year and a half ago. Um, and I, and she said, you know, she had made a, um, she had made a declaration to God. If God helped her make $6 million that she would tie 600,000. Right. And she made it. And then she ties 600,000. And, you know, she had a moment where she was like, mm, I could use that extra, I can't remember what it was, 100,000 or 200,000 somewhere else in my life, right? Because there's never enough, right? The, your dreams keep growing, your, your bills keep growing, Think, your life, as your life gets bigger, things keep growing, right? And so there was never, there was, there was in that moment, no matter how much money you make, she had that moment where there wasn't enough and she thought, oh, I've given enough. And the minute you feel, feel like you've given enough, you're already out of the game, right? And so this 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 Facebook Live this morning, the 6 a.m. coffee with Shanda, is about bringing the awareness that you are powerful. And when you operate from a place of limitation, you know, funnels don't work. Um, sales teams quit. Um, you know, uh, you get frustrated. Relationships break up. You stop accepting people for who they are. You start thinking that, I got this and you go and you do it on your own and these are all these are all thought process and please know that I coach myself on these exact things I coach myself on these exact things and many times I've stumbled and fall, fallen and it's about failing faster so that you can get back on track but if there's anything that I know without a doubt is that generosity is connected to abundance and I won't speak into a million other things that I know that gener generosity is connected with, but I know that if you wanna make money, you have to become generous. Because it's, when you make an offer, you don't make an offer from, how's it gonna get them? You make an offer from giving. You make an offer from giving. And when you can give in a way that people want to be given to, not the way that you want to give, but the way people want to be given to, then it makes a big difference in that offer landing, right? If you operate like that inside of a relationship, it's going to work better, right? It's just gonna work better. So I ask you, where are you hoarding and tight with your purse strings? Is someone trying to sell to you right now and you know you need it, but you're so afraid that you won't make that, you won't make that jump? Is God calling you to do something right now, but you're still saying not now? You know, I tried to play that game with myself last night. I was like, okay, I'm gonna pledge X amount of dollars. Not, maybe not now, maybe next year, I've given enough, right? And so I ask you to watch that mentality inside of your day today. Where do you feel like you've given enough? To your relationship, to your fitness? Um, you know, are you doing your best, right? Are you doing your best? And if things aren't working, I promise you, if you just roll it back to you, you'll actually see where you're operating in scarcity. And scarcity is the direct opposite of generosity. So is this making a difference for you guys? If it is, if you could just, you know, shoot me a little note, let me know, say hello, tell me yes, I'm hearing this. Hey, you guys on Instagram, how you doing? 
You know what's unfortunate on Instagram is after we're done this Facebook Live, I actually can't see your comments, which is sad. So you guys need to know on Hardcore Business on Facebook um, is where I actually go back in and answer questions throughout the day and help people in their business. Hey, hi, Complete Paris. How are you? Thank you. London, yes, awesome, it's making a difference. Okay, you guys on Facebook, is this making a difference? Yes, your offer equals giving, it absolutely does. Awesome, awesome. So here's what's amazing, do you know the best speakers on the planet, one of them is actually Joel Olstein. And I studied Joel Olstein, um, and the, the great benefit of studying Joel Olstein is my faith gets stronger. Right, like my tithe yesterday, my offering yesterday was a huge act of faith. I do not have the money for it right now, and I made the act of faith to actually stretch myself and to rely on God, not just my formulas. Right now, don't get me wrong, I do not go off my formulas. God speaks about money 2,000 times in the Bible, you guys. 2,000 times. Do you think that the rich people who wrote the Bible? maybe have something to say about how to create abundance, but yeah, watch the people who are struggling, and I mean this with love, they are opinionated, non-generous people. Don't be that, and I've been that in my life before, and that those were the days that I struggled massively and deals didn't come together, um, the right people didn't come together. Also, don't be afraid of letting go of people don't be afraid of letting go of clients. Don't be afraid of letting go of customers. Don't be, be afraid of letting go of contractors. Don't be afraid of letting go of employees if they don't have the right attitude. I agree with what Seal said to Jesse Itzler. If you follow and people follow 100% of the plan, work with them. Don't fight for people to not succeed, right? Okay, so Holly, yes, thank you. Relates to my situation right now, scarcity in my belief in my own ability to help others. Yeah, Holly, what if you actually just went out there and gave and forgot about yourself for a minute? What, like, when I launched my first program, which nobody got results in, right? I, I had to tell myself the story that I must have been part of their spiritual experience of getting ready to get ready, <laughs> right? But whatever you have to tell yourself to be able to get yourself back into service and alignment to keep going. But my first program, I didn't know what I was doing. And literally, I made myself the decision that I was going to go out there and do my best, right? Even training yesterday when I was working out, um, the last 15 minutes of working out, I started just kind of going through the motions. And I literally, I literally said to myself, Shanda, are you doing your best right now? You've got more in you. You're better than this. And I started talking myself up versus talking myself down. So the people who are giving, they are living. The people who are giving, they are living. A really, another really great thing that they said last night that I think is powerful is that when you lose your vision, and, and I totally agree with this, when you lose your vision, you start to flounder, right? So when you lose your vision, you know, and I've seen this lots of times with my clients, when you lose your vision, you got to, you got to work hard on finding a new vision that aspires you, doesn't retract you. Right? If you're thinking about letting go, then that is, I'm going to call that the devil. I'm going to call that sh shadow work. I'm going to call that your ego. You know, that is a sign that you are slipping. Right? You've got to find another ambitious vision. God says in the Bible that your vision should be way more ambition, ambitious than what you actually believe is possible. So that's not, I don't feel like doing this anymore. I'm going to sit myself back into a more comfortable vision because I want to spend time with my son. Do I want to spend time with my son? Absolutely. And I do every day. I sat on the floor with him after school yesterday and we ate uh, veggie quesadillas together. And we looked at the ocean and he put his little arm around my head and we talked about the surf. And it was a really cool experience to sit there and do that with them and not be thinking about the 1,200 million things that I need to do inside my business. That is a leadership mindset. That is a leadership mindset. And it's not an either or, right? It's not an either or. However, I'm not going to downgrade my company, nor did I when I had a baby, because I wanted to spend time with my son. I created a strategy to spend time with my son, and I gave generously in other areas to pay for team 
I gave time, I gave money to be able to bring on more to allow myself the ability to spend time with my son. So here's what I'm trying to say to you right now. Something you want does not mean that you pull back. That is a slippery slope of going back to being fat, a slippery slope of going back to being broke, a slippery slope of going back to being single. Your ambition should keep getting bigger. That's what the Bible actually says. So again, I'm not getting religious on you. I'm getting scripture on you right now, right? So if you're spiritual, whether it's A Course of Miracles, the Bible, or whatever it is you're studying, just open up to scripture for a minute and realize that your vision should be getting bigger. And whatever it is you want, it's going to require you to have an act of faith and give. And when you won't give, then I'm going to tell you you're going to keep being stuck. You're going to keep being stuck. And I know it's hard. It's hard for me too. It's all relative. It's all relative. Right? So, okay. So let me, let me just answer a couple comments. You guys on Instagram, unfortunately, once I stop this, uh, face this Instagram live, I won't be able to actually answer your comments. So know that you can always jump over to facebook.com forward slash heart core, like a heart core business. And on that page, and Heartcore is all one word, Heartcore Business, so facebook.com forward slash Heartcore Business. And you can always ask me questions on there, and, and throughout the day I'll jump on there and, and I'll answer your questions. Okay, so you guys on Facebook, let me know um, some questions that you have. Okay, so um, so so Hope 365 Ministry, the scripture reference to getting bigger. You know what, I actually, I'm not a minister or a priest, so I can't remember what that was. We were talking about that last night. Um, so I, I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, but I bet if you Google it, you could probably find it. Um, you could definitely probably find it if you Google it. Um, and I don't know if on C3 Church in San Diego, I'm not sure if they, um, if they actually, uh, like often they stream on their on their Facebook page, and so or not their Facebook page, their website. So maybe it's on their website from streaming, and they quoted a lot of scripture around that. It was awesome. Okay, so um, Holly, I've been following up. Just I've been following up and just giving, and it's helping. I've made I made a few very small sales. Great. Now it's time to call people who gave their phone numbers way out of way out of my comfort zone. Great, Holly, that's a perfect, so Holly's giving a perfect example. She started doing follow-up inside her business, following up with people who didn't purchase with her. And she just went with the, the intention of giving, like make a difference, right? Seek to first understand before you ever make an offer. Seek to first serve before you ever make an offer, right? So here's the deal, an offer is a solution for somebody's pain. An offer is a solution for someone's pain. So making an offer is not greedy, right? It's not greedy at all. In fact, again, greed and generosity can't hang out together. So if you're being generous, it's impossible for you to be greedy, right? And greedy looks like, you know, judgment or judging the people who didn't buy or judging yourself for not being good enough. That's all the crew, the tribe that's greedy right? Generosity is like, like you just have a stand for that person. You believe in them. You, um, you love them without even knowing them. You love them and you love the vision that they want to create and you want to help them get it. And you're committed to that. And when you're committed to something, there's a fire that stokes, right? And when that fire stokes, then it stops being about you. So great. I love that you're seeing Holly that through just following up and, and giving, what happens is there's tons of opportunities to make offers because it is the solution, right? It's the solution. I mean, let's be honest. I don't think anybody's on my Instagram live or my Facebook live because you don't want to grow a business. Or maybe you don't know that I'm a business coach and you're brand new to me, but I help people eliminate the conversation that prosperity or money is ever a reason why you don't take action in your life. Like money should never be that reason. That means you're serving money versus God, right? I don't want that at all. I want you to serve spirit, serve God versus serving money. If money has got your life, then something's got to change like right now, right? Which will require you to give or to invest to be able to make that happen. 
You get what I'm saying? So whether, you know, you're donating in the church, it's going to break. It's going to break an aspect inside your mind that causes you to be stingy, right? Which will be the same, the same thinking pattern that will have you have the ability to invest in your business. Now, the ability to invest in your business doesn't always mean that you are a giver. Sometimes you give to get. What if you just gave to become an incredible servant of your craft and to serve so many millions of people? I mean, what if you actually just, what if you actually got like, you work for you, you work for God, and that you got to become great at what you do and up level, which requires an act of giving, right? And so if you could make your giving about something other than you getting and expect to get, Right, like, so I have a wall in my bedroom, and it's like 20,000, 700, all these different random donations that I've given. And the reason why I put them there is so that I see them on a daily basis so I remember who I'm being. Not because I'm being proud of myself, not because I'm, I'm like, you know, it, it's about keeping to inspire myself to keep giving and to realize that through my giving, through giving my car away to my clients to incentivize them, whether some of them feel connected to that or not, I don't care. I don't care. It's a beautiful act of generosity, and I cannot imagine ever, ever, ever saying no to somebody who wanted to help me, right? But it requires you to meet people halfway. So look for acts of generosity in your space because God is trying to give to you. And then if you're stuck, make it a point to go out and give not just once, but congruently, continuity-wise. And I'll tell you, it really, really works. Okay, so uh, Alora, the name of the addition to my Bible that I'm reading is called the New Believer's Bible, the New Testament. And like I said, the first year I understood like six chapters in it or six you know, um, uh, parables in it. And now I understand almost all of it. Um, another thing that a lot of people keep asking me is what am I drinking? This is what I'm drinking instead of coffee because coffee just kind of wires me up. I got it on Amazon. It's a macchiato and I add, um, I add, uh, I add macadamia nut or almond milk, uh, juice to it. And then, or not juice, milk. A second thing that I drink is I drink Hyburst throughout the day, Hyburst.com. And actually, in fact, you know what? Today, I'm going to give a couple boxes away of Hyburst. See this? Hyburst.com. Here's why I drink this. This is actually my husband's product. Um, and I didn't actually drink it when they first came out with this product. I, um, I actually drink this throughout the day because it gives me lots of B vitamins. And my acupuncturist loves it, believe it or not. Um, because it's real food and I'm tired of putting chemicals inside my body. So it's real food. It gives me lots of energy and it makes me feel really good throughout the day. And I always tend to run dehydrated. So, and I tend to hold, like I'll hold an extra five pounds on my weight because of being dehydrated. So that really helped me kind of shed that with me. So just, I get messages all the time about what I'm drinking. I'm drinking maca in the morning, maca chino, and then I'm drinking high burst throughout the day to keep hydrated and keep my energy level up. All right, okay, so I'm just gonna just go through the thread a little bit more and Stacy, I've invested a lot of money in myself over the years and yet still don't seem to have the motivation skill to have a successful business. Um, Stacy, private message me on Instagram. Um, let me talk to you a little bit about maybe what's happening in your mindset um, or in your strategy. So what I've realized is a lot of people who are frustrated with building a business often spent time on branding. Branding's great, by the way. But they often spent time on branding, websites. Look, websites don't make us money. They just don't, especially without traffic. And if you were to put your attention on first building an audience or an email list and then on fulfillment with the product and services that you're offering, notice that I said first spend your time on building the audience before you spend your time on building the product or service. So build your time on building an audience first. You can do that inside of 60 and 90 days. And then secondly, focus on fulfillment. And then thirdly, re reoccurring orders, right? If you want to be in business and you don't want to hustle every single month, you need reoccurring orders. 
right? One of the reasons, one of the biggest reasons why I don't freak out ever inside of my company on cash flow is our company gives itself a raise every single year because of the freedom model that I developed about five years ago inside my business based on a vision. And the vision was that I would have a section to my community that people really just never left. And that section was going to be a community so valuable with the people in it that they would be generous, heart-centered, making good money, and that they were there for each other, not just there for themselves. And that I would price it in a way that they could actually still invest in other things and be able to grow their company. Because what I know for sure is that you need to invest in multiple different things to grow your company at different levels. Of growing your company so Stacy go ahead I'll be really honest with you just instant message me on Instagram you guys on Facebook feel free to instant message me um, I it might take me a day or two to get back to you but I will definitely do my best to get back to you and I will get back to you so if you could be patient with that that would be great uh, look at you Susanna putting up high burst up there it is yeah high burst.com that's right yeah it's awesome it's an awesome product um, crystal yes sure okay um, Ariella, ways to grow, to, ways to build your audience are uh, telesummits, video summits, co-creation, live streams, things that you're working with influencers. You want to work with influencers. I know there's often a big block on why would influ influencers work with me. Um, that's more than I can talk about on this Facebook Live, and I'm not holding back on you because I really am a super generous person. Um, there's a couple Facebook lives ago, meaning that last Friday, if you look on my Facebook page, um, you will see a Facebook live that I actually did that I put in a link to a webinar. And the webinar says, if you need to grow an email list, go ahead and grab this link. And it's a web class that I did on it. I do make an offer for a list building product on that web class. However, if you need it, get it. You know what I mean? It's completely reasonable. In fact, um, I even offer a gift certificate to pay for the program if you act fast on that webinar. So if you don't need it, you can just watch the webinar and I actually tell you how to do it on the webinar. Okay, so you can go do that and I will um, also pop that webinar link inside of uh, the description on the Facebook Live. Instagram, I can't do it for you guys because once I stop this stream, the feed goes away. But on my Hardcore Business Facebook page, I will also, on, on this Facebook Live, I'll pop that web class in the description to help you as well. Okay, so um, any other questions before I jump off for the day? Um, I asked you if you invest, you told me you have your team locked in, is that being generous? Um, I'm not sure what you mean learn to profit, I asked you if you invest. You told me you have your team locked in. Is that being generous? I'm sorry, I don't understand what that means. Um, but I do invest. I tithe. I invest in my education. I'm well over the six-figure mark in investing in my business coaching. Um, and I invest in my, my team, meaning uh, my employees. Um, I also incentivize my employees so that they get a percentage of, of our, our profits in different divisions. Um, I also invest in God and I tithe. Uh, I believe that this, these ideas have been given to me based on me being faithful and I don't ever, ever, ever downplay that. I always believed in that even before I started reading scripture, but now that I read scripture, it keeps getting that much better. So, um, I loved your interaction with individuals who completed the survey. How do I, uh, Christine. Hong, how do I tr how do I transition to give the same attention to the rest of my list that watched the summit but did not complete the survey? Just treat it as a whole community and continue to actively respond more attention. So, Christine, you could actually do something like this. You know, you could do Facebook Lives every single day for your entire community, and they don't have to be half an hour long. They could be, you know, twenty minutes. They could be fifteen minutes, but the act of you committing to doing something that possibly you don't even want to do is the act of stepping into a space of generosity. And when you start to start to see the benefits like of you giving and you being generous, especially in the areas that you don't necessarily want to be generous in, you know, what happens is you start growing your capacity to hold more. 
Because what happens is what what wasn't in your comfort zone, what wasn't in what you want to do, because we only want to do what's in our comfort zone, you see? So when you start getting the habit of doing what's outside your comfort zone, what actually happens is a new level of comfort moves into your comfort zone, and then everything starts to up-level. So Christine, you could start doing Facebook Lives for your community, letting your list know, bring them to Facebook, you know, every single day at a certain time. Be consistent on the time. And if you're consistent on the time, people know how to rely on you. And then just give. You know, do 15-minute increments if you want and actually give. And then that will bring up engagement in your community. People who really know that they want to work with you will opt in to work with you like that. People who know that they want to hate you will know that they want to hate you. And that's a great sign, right? It's a great sign if you have a group of people who can't stand you and a group of people who absolutely love you, share your posts, are totally into you, that's your tribe. And you want to keep focusing on them and giving more to them. Don't focus on the people who hate you other than to give you a knowing that you are actually um, stating an opinion and a point of view that ruffles feathers. And if you, are creating a, if you are creating a point of view in the world that pisses people off, that actually means that you stand for something, right? And you stand strong enough for it. And if you stand strong enough for anything, you will always have a group of people who will absolutely stand against you, right? And so that's a good thing. However, your motivation and inspiration and your belief to grow and give more will come from the people who are raving fans. So I will end on that note. Um, it is Thursday right now, so I will see you on Friday morning, tomorrow morning with Coffee with Shannon. Here's what's great. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to have a guest on. Her name is Krista O'Leary, and she is an interior designer. She also does feng shui. She's been helping me with my house, uh, declutter some certain areas in my house. Um, but what's crazy about her is that she's worked with clients that, you know, their bottom lines have increased by just using color, just, you know, putting their desks or their house arranged in certain areas. Um, they've increased their bottom lines inside of 30 and 45 days. People who have been serially single, meaning that they've been single forever, have found their relationships because she's literally done some simple things inside of their house or their office to be able to create prosperity, love, and freedom. So I adore her. Every time I talk to her, I find her so interesting. She is a client of mine, but she's a client of mine that we actually have coming out to uh, even inform my interior designer in San Diego with our new house, meaning that I believe in her so much that I'm going to have her tomorrow morning on this Facebook Live with me. So come back, join us tomorrow morning, share it with your friends. If you've got clutter in your house or you know anybody who has clutter in their house, go ahead and invite them to the Facebook Live tomorrow morning, the Instagram Live. Unfortunately, we will not be able to stream on Instagram on this because I won't be able to do an interview that way, but you guys are welcome to join us on facebook.com forward slash hardcore business tomorrow morning, and we'll go from there. All right, you guys, God bless, and I hope this was useful.